Happy Halloween to all of you people watching. It's actually tomorrow, but you may be watching this tomorrow or listening. I'm Lionel. This is true. Yes, I'm Lionel from Toronto and Robert from Nashville, Tennessee. So we're going to try to be a little bit more jovial, maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe not jovial, but we might be a little less, a little less on the serious side because everybody wants to have fun. It's Halloween. You, you're getting ready to hand out candy, take the kids out and go get some candy, steal your kids' candy, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and don't tell me you never did. Don't tell me no. you never snuck a Kit Kat. I've you already did. started. <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> but your kids are adults, man. You got grandbabies. What did you what did you steal uh, from your grandbabies? Man? Oh, I, I didn't steal anything. I just took I just took that out of the candy bowl. So <laughs> do they do do they do they bring do they bring the, the, the grandbabies over for Halloween for a for a for a gift bag from, from Papa? Uh, they didn't last year. I forget what they did last year, but this year they are. They're coming over tomorrow, we're having dinner and they're taking the grandkids out and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. that's, that's, that's always a thing. Like, you know, Halloween was always such a huge tradition. Both our countries, uh, I mean, it's, it's not just here, obviously, but the way we do Halloween is is always been so tied to the same basic traditions. But the one thing that I remember is that there were certain things that were done similar and maybe slightly differently that th mm. I want to say, thankfully, are not done so much anymore. I don't, right. I, 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 I don't want to say at, at all. But I, I believe it was like tonight, not Halloween, uh, had different names in different regions in both the United States and Canada. I don't know what it was called everywhere, but I know that in Manitoba we called it, I think they called it Gate Night, not Date, Gate. And oh, that's interesting. People would go out and either egg or TP things. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? Kids will be kids. It was a thing. It was some of those, sometimes it was adults. Uh, I think it's something that started around the 50s or 60s or something like that. But apparently that was also huge in places like Detroit, where I think it was mainly eggs or something. They threw eggs at people's houses or something like that. Um, mm. yeah, I, I have to look that, that up. Uh, it was, like I said, it wasn't necessarily everywhere. But thankfully, that's not a thing, because who wants to have to clean that up? Especially right. it's Halloween and now. Because back in the day, you would put like a ghost on your porch, you know, and stickers yeah. in the windows. And people would, you know, you know, be screaming trick or treat or Halloween apples or something. Don't ask me why they did that in Winnipeg. <laughs> Halloween apples. I mean, like you had to sing it. <laughs> oh God, it's almost embarrassing. I, I hated going to the door, a and everyone else, everywhere else in the world is going trick or treat, and they're all having fun, right? And I'm, I, I got to go to the door and go Halloween apples. What the hell am I doing? Here. So did, did anybody in Canada ever give out hockey pucks for you know for instead of candy? <laughs> <laughs> you, you would go there wouldn't you you would go there um do, you know who knows maybe maybe uh, maybe but yeah no we did our trick-or-treat but you know things were like i said it was different but now uh everybody likes to not everybody but a lot of people like to put a lot of stuff on the lawn and in the windows and in their garage oh, yeah. and set up these things and i just should mention we did this last year and this is now a couple of years after pandemic and Everything had gone back to the normal the previous year, but we still had next to nobody because nobody further down from where we lived, I shouldn't say nobody, but very few people even turned their lights on, yet alone they had something inviting like a pumpkin on the steps or something like that. No jack-o'-lanterns. Yeah. Um, and we were the only ones on our block. So you had to cross, you had to go three houses this way and cross the street or and then you back and forth and over there. And, uh, and so the kids would just look and they go, well, there's like 15 houses this way to go to and only one there. Let's not even bother. And, you know, I, I think one year we had, I think I counted 11 groups of kids. It was maybe 22 kids in total. Uh, the yeah. following year, there was about 35 or something. Last year, after I think the first kid came, within the first hour, I stopped trying to count. We were well over a hundred by this point. <laughs> the candy yeah. ran out, and we went out. Somebody went out and got more candy. <laughs> Started digging in the house for stuff that we had. <laughs> oh, there's a box of chocolate bars in the freezer or something. Go get that. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it it it's so this time it's like unbelievably well prepared um, because now um, it started with a, a couple of neighbors around the corner that put more stuff. 
And so we started putting more stuff. Well, it's actually, I shouldn't say we, it's not so much me, it's other people in the house. And I'll help out a little. <laughs> um, but now there's animatronics in the yard and stuff. And the guy down the street has builds his own animatronic stuff. Um, and so he's got like, you know, people coming out of coffins, popping up out of coffins and stuff like that. And, uh, and the kids love that. And then they go across the street to the guy who's got a bunch of inflatables, but his whole yard is covered with it. Then they come around yeah. the corner and they see our house here and it's got all this stuff. And this year you got to walk up and go through the walkway and get into the, the open garage and all the stuff lining the walls into the garage where there'll be two or three people sitting handing out the candy and a bunch of animatronics and stuff going on in there too as well. Yeah. So it's it's more fun for everybody. It turns out to be great. and Everyone wants to take pictures and videos and and we have more fun with it. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you see a lot more of that too. People lighting up their yards and their houses more so but yeah it's past. it's 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 ever since covid now it's gotten yeah. kind of rivaling christmas lights in a lot of respect you know um, yeah i know obviously Anyways. covid's you know a few years out now but um it's literally taken a couple of years for things to kind of really get back into the swing of things as far as that yeah. kind of activity goes so um really the last couple of years it's been kind of back to normal uh, but yeah, definitely you have a lot more, you know, and, and like you see, like there's one store we had that had like a, a nine foot skeleton, you know, that you could <laughs> wreck in your heart. And, and it's just, you know, it's crazy. So yeah, people, people really yeah. take it pretty yeah, well, serious. Yeah, well, we got one that's, I think, seven or seven and a half feet or something like that. And the head twists all the way around and it's holding yeah. bowling pins or something <laughs> and yeah, another my, one my brother in law body and it spins around it has a head a face yeah. on both sides of the head yeah <laughs> yeah my brother-in-law gets pretty serious about the halloween and the christmas stuff uh, more so christmas than the halloween but like at the christmas time he's he's got one of those houses like everybody wants to drive by because it's you know lasers yeah. shooting everywhere and you know the songs on your radio and the talking mouths and you know, he hijacks one of the FM stations <laughs> illegally. Well, no, no wait, that's broadcast. not illegal. Wait a minute, it's not illegal. They, yeah. they, there's there's broadcast um, <clears throat> uh, frequencies that you're allowed to use without license as long as the power stays below a certain. That's very yeah. common. Yeah, but when I can, uh, when he's 15 minutes down the road and I can almost pick his. Oh, from my <laughs> you, you. Okay. All right. Well, you probably shouldn't <laughs> out the poor guy now. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, it's funny, but, uh, but yeah, he gets yeah, there's, pretty there's serious. A lot of that. In fact, I, I'm thinking this year, I want to actually uh, maybe go and find out uh, how many places in and around the greater Toronto area do, do this. Uh, I know there's more than one. Uh, although the original one, which was called Lindsay lights, which is, one of the ones that started off the fad for everybody in North America, by the way, um, they may be the originals. I'm not even sure. I'd like to look that up. Um, I don't think they're doing theirs anymore. And it's too bad because I first discovered that like 20 some odd years ago, 20 years ago, I was still in Winnipeg. Um, and I never knew where they were. I thought they were, it was an American city for the longest time. And then I found out at years after I moved here that they were, probably only 25 minutes away from where i am now by car if that no, that's in, that's no. in traffic it's probably probably 10 minutes 15, 10 15 minutes um in light traffic to get to where to where they are uh but i don't think that, i think they stopped doing it years ago which is too bad um but i know there's there's got to be others i like to find out and i'd love to go see some of them in person and you know shoot some video in my own yeah way. yeah but that said, uh, you know, it takes a lot of technology. Back in the day when Lindsay Lights did theirs originally, it was all uh, your regular incandescent uh, Christmas light bulbs and stuff. Yeah. And and the amount of computing power it needed, considering computing power wasn't much for that sort of thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Nowadays, it's all LEDs. Uh, you use way less power to get way more lights. And you can, you can write programs, do it right from your phone. Yeah, sitting in your car and wirelessly activate everything. Um, yeah, it's pretty sophisticated yeah. now. Yeah, it is. Uh, so segueing on the technology thing, <laughs> we'll talk about AI. 
uh now a lot of people complained a lot about how you know say when when uh, uh the pixel 9 pro xl came out oh there's certain things in there ai and gemini it's not quite fully baked yet there, it's missing a few features and it's gained a number of those features just since then since august and it's still gaining way more and gemini model uh there's apparently they're going to be announcing a new one sometime probably by the end of the year and, hmm. and so is oh help me out here what's the matter with me you think it was chat gpt <laughs> no the parent company but yeah you're on the right track oh uh, open ai open ai yeah apparently they're both making huge announcements on the next model which huh. is every time they make an announcement it's usually a giant leap and it has been a giant leap every time they've done it and they've done it i think three times in the last calendar year each and they have they have been big so here's the thing that i'm thinking um google's google's going to be able to get uh a lot of that new stuff in probably into the new year at some point within gemini and it's going to be the difference of how much you can do in the phone. But it's still going to take a Pixel 10 and the Tensor G, what is it, 5, I believe? It's going to be the TSMC-made chip. Uh, where that one is like actually going to finally be able to keep up with the top Samsungs and the top iPhones in actual power and ability. At that point, the AI will be able to be done al almost exclusively on the device with the power of still being able to do the cloud computing alongside yeah. of it that's going to be a huge deal um right now apple is doing their on device stuff however even after they give you most of the stuff well into next year as opposed to by december uh it still will lack a number of things there'll be a couple of things that i'm actually a little jealous i don't get to do but most of what they're offering now and will be offering is already available on a Pixel or a Samsung or both. Mm -hmm. And like we have Magic Rewrite. Unfortunately, Magic Rewrite only works in the messaging app. They can do that very similar thing anywhere where you can write in an iPhone. So I'm a little jealous of that, I admit it. However... There's no way that both Google and or Samsung and probably together um, won't actually update probably sometime in the new year uh, to allow that to be more common, like basically write it anywhere. It, it's something they basically could just put in the keyboard. You write it into the keyboard. You think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, certainly, certainly Samsung. Because I mean, even the S23, never mind the S24 and the upcoming S25 have more than enough power uh, uh, to be able to handle uh, a larger amount of on-device AI. So I would be surprised if Samsung didn't actually implement that in the S25 and then trickle it into the S24 and probably S23, at least the 24 anyways. <clears throat> Google will probably do it, but on a more limited basis. Like they'll, they'll put it in so that you can use it in email, uh, and, along with messaging and maybe certain messaging apps or something like that. A, a limited yeah. functionality because, again, they're going to need that more powerful chip next year. Um, yeah, I think, though, that the S23 Ultra is probably going to be left out in the cold with a lot of that because maybe. some of the S24 features aren't even still available on the S23, and they're not coming to the S23 because it doesn't oh, have that okay. advanced NPU um uh, yeah you know, no then you're right you're, yeah, yeah 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 you're right then without that in yeah without that yeah. And, and even even the google pixel 9 pro xl <clears throat> has google's version of that processing unit yeah um it's just the main chip made by samsung or manufactured pardon me by samsung uh is is not uh powerful enough to yeah. really just say let's throw everything at it uh, but next year's the rumors are already coming out that this thing is not only going to rival anything that Apple is going to put out, not that they have now. And that's saying a lot because Samsung's next phone should be a contender as well. Um, yeah. So if the Pixel actually is going where they're saying, there's a chance it may actually be the most powerful phone on the market 
for at least a few months until Samsung comes out with the S26. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward scary. to the S25, <laughs> um, which I hope will be out, you know, but late yeah. January, early. Well, that, that's too bad that. because you know you might you might change your mind about pixels again when when the when the when the, yeah. when the ten comes out, no. ten Pro XL. You may change your mind and go no, back. No, I'm I'm back to the I'm, fold, baby. I'm so embedded now <laughs> with the whole you know Samsung ecosystem that oh, it just you sound like it a doesn't sheeple. make sense. You sound like the sheeple. So basically, well, if, if Google yeah, had not okay, done what they did exactly. to me, I would be I, still in the Google sheep. If that is the reason why, because of what Google did, fine. But as soon as you say, oh, I'm stuck in the ecosystem, it sounds exactly like someone. Working I didn't say on stuck. Who says the same thing. I didn't I've say I'm stuck. People say, I would love to try a pixel, but oh, then I'd have to do this and I can't use that. And I don't understand. You can use a Mac and a pixel. You can use a Mac and a Samsung. You can use a Samsung laptop and an, and an iPhone. You can use whatever tool you want. Are there certain things and features you may not get? Yes, but there's usually something else that does the job. Well, right? let me be clear. I, I'm not stuck. <laughs> I can. I, I have no problem changing if I want to change, or there's enough reason to change. Ah, so there's that's not. Thing. It's it's there embedded. I'm embedded into their ecosystem, and I don't have any reason to change. Right. Okay, because so everything works perfectly. That's, yes. That's my reason. And and I'm saying that when the Pixel 10 Pro XL comes out, you're going to be like, oh wow, I think I might give that a shot. No. Because I'm pretty sure that you Samsung and Google is going to be like this constantly. So what? What if they came I out just... with a Nexus Five Remaster XL? <laughs> oh my god! Nexus Five <laughs> Remaster. <laughs> this the isn't remaster a video game. Already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, how about how about the Nexus Six P Remaster? No, please, no, not that one. Well, uh, how about if they go back to the like the, the the article or not article, but the video I sent you with the uh, eleven thousand dollar cell phone that was yeah, as big as yeah. my desk? You know? <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Good, good. Well, Motorola did a, a, a did a, a remaster of of the StarTac, did they not? Yeah. Well, yeah, something I mean, similar. I mean, they didn't yeah. call it remaster, but I mean, it's the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened, right? Yeah. Uh, that is that is kind of interesting, though. Um, but if that were the case, I, I would rather have a remastered version of a Nokia 6110, you know, <laughs> yeah. a candy bar style Nokia 6110 that, that, that had all the appeal that that had to me then, which was, uh, somebody who was, uh, just getting into the first time in my life work in an office business like sense. And I was so excited. I was going to have my own cell phone. The company is paying for it. Uh, I could drop the same floor and it still worked. Um, I felt like uh, I was all that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and, yeah, that but I was working for Rogers. So I was selling these, these items and I believed in them. But yeah. uh, if you asked me to go out and sell stuff right now, I would be like, I, well, I'd want to sell a pixel because I love pixels. But if somebody came to me and said, well, there are any problems with that? I'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> yeah I, yeah well, it, it. <laughs> it cracked me up in that video because they're like and the handheld unit can be used for up to 30 minutes um during a two-hour period of time and before you have to charge again i'm like you can you can yeah. use it 30 minutes out of two hours and that's all what I don't, let's, make, let's, <laughs> let's be clear what he's talking about actually is is not even the handheld so that wasn't even the handheld i believe that was actually the um Oh, God, oh the, 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 the purse phone or what? Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, there was a term for it. It was, uh, oh my God, uh, it's poor something portable, um, transportable. Yes. And they called it a transportable, uh, oh. and and basically it was one that you would actually put in your car. You would have everything installed in the car, like good, but this would sit in a bracket, and you would just disconnect it, and that thing that you picked up that was in it would basically a battery pack. Whereas, yeah. uh, and, and at the very top of it would just be where, where the actual transceiver is. So you would get, uh, what did they say again? It was like 30 minutes or something like 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. There's some ridiculous. But I used to have a brick phone. I used to have a brick phone. Mine was actually made by Oki. And, and and I I remember always saying, you know, I can't even <laughs> tell anybody I had a Nokia in the early days. But apparently Oki had something to do with Nokia. And I don't remember what that was. I'd have to look it up. So it looked like an actual Nokia. Yeah, Nokia did make phones then. Um and it was a brick phone. They were a little thinner than the, than the than the Motorola ones, and the big wide thing. And they did look like a brick. Literally, yeah. you could kill somebody with the bloody thing easily. Yeah. And I was so excited; it was my first phone. But it was also like a two year old thing. And people now had ones that you could hold in your hand. I mean, they were still huge. Like yeah. I mean, uh, they were probably an inch and a half thick and this long. They looked like a, a handset that people would use, like a cordless phone that you would leave on your kitchen table back in the nineties. <laughs> right uh, they were about that size uh and yeah. a lot heavier um but my brick phone was bigger than that heavier than that and uh while their phones could last them a few hours not of talk time by the way like six hours <laughs> stand by and about about 45 yeah. minutes to an hour of talk time mine yeah. had about 26 minutes of talk time and about two hours of standby and that was considered good so yeah. i would turn it off if i wasn't using it and i didn't need to use it I took it everywhere. I took it to the bar. I took it to karaoke. I I thought I was all of that. I, yeah. I took a class I was taking. And I thought, I thought I put it in a briefcase. <laughs> I didn't need That's the briefcase. Hilarious. But I loved it, man. I felt like I was a, you know, important yeah. person. And uh, then I got the bill. <laughs> that stayed on my record, apparently, for quite some time. I think seven years. Uh, we'll just leave it with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was young and stupid. Uh, yeah. You know, anyways, we're, we're, we're getting way off topic here. Um, well, I imagine if you're using one of those phones and you had a meter like your electric meter, I imagine you could start to see it going. <laughs> he has it spinning up and <laughs> running <laughs> your minutes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Technology, man. It's, you know, that's the thing though. It's just like, yeah. uh, you look back and it's yeah. you know, the advancements and. Oh and yeah. Even, today, even the first like, good uh, phones that could last you a good chunk of the day, you know, like an hour and a half of talk time and five hours of standby or 10 hours of standby. Those were considered yeah. good compared to the previous models. Those are the first yeah. digital phones were in that area. Right. Where's the first, some of the later analog ones in that same era, would be almost all day for standby and about an hour and a half of talk time. You could get the same yeah. talk time out of the digital ones, but the standby time was reduced hugely. But the plugging in of these things, because at the time, many of them came with nickel metal hydride batteries, which at the time was like the future of batteries. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to use a nickel metal hydride battery ever again. The memory effect on those was horrid. If yes. you charged it when it was at 80 percent you can forget ever getting that 20 percent back you, you well yeah. you could you had to basically we actually had machines inside the roger stores and i think all of the stores basically did this um they had machines where they could take the battery from somebody's phone because they come oh my battery's done or maybe the ones you're trying to sell even uh and you put it on this thing and it deliberately drains the battery to 100 percent and then charges it to full and that's the only way to get that back. But you still lose at least 10% every time you didn't discharge it all the way. Which was right. ridiculous. Oh, we so much yeah. fun. So much yeah, fun. now we get now we get mad if we don't get, you know, four or five hours of screen on time and 12 hours yeah. of you know, <laughs> oh, more two than days that. of standby. And, more than that. Know. Let's remind anybody listening uh, or watching, I'm in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Robert is in the area of Nashville, Tennessee. There is a huge distance. In 1997, she will say 97, 98. If I wanted to call him on the phone, it would have cost me a minimum of $1 per minute. We only talked for one yeah. minute, but there would have yeah. been a connection fee on top of that. It, that would have been a $3 call. Right. I, it doesn't cost me anything now. Right. Uh, but back then, uh, the best phone plan that I could get was about $50 a month that allowed me, and you can get cheaper plans, but $50 a month that allowed me, I think, 300 minutes locally, not province-wide, 
not Canada wide, local minutes. And yeah, back then you still had to think about where does local end, right? If you're if in Toronto, there's right. so many surrounding cities that are all attached. It's like living in New York and New Jersey's across the river, or living in Dallas and Fort Worth right. across the street, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so you cross into one other area, you can call this city, but not the next one. And it right. would look considered local, but that city could call back to Toronto and it would still be local because they don't have a big enough area and they still have to be able to call back for business reasons, or family and whatever. So that's usually how it worked in most of North America. Whereas places like Dallas and Fort Worth are both big cities attached to each other. <laughs> so yeah. you could have somebody living in Fort Worth calling somebody in Dallas and they got to pay long distance. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. And yeah. you're living across the street from each other. And yeah. I've, I've actually had that in Winnipeg where we, we, we tried to call people from Selkirk. And, and Winnipeg doesn't go all the way to Selkirk, but you can jog there in an hour. It <laughs> I might be yeah. exaggerating slightly. It might take a little longer than an hour, but it's it's extremely close. It, it's no way you can consider that long distance, but it was until about 2000 or 2001 or something, they considered it long distance call. Right. <laughs> yeah. When I lived in California, you know, of course, such a high populous state, there was multiple yeah. zip code or area codes all over the place. And right. so you had to really be careful who you're calling because whether it's a landline <laughs> or <laughs> And you know, cell phone. It didn't matter what it was. You you ended up paying long distance fees. Oh, but, that's right too. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. In the early days, when you're roaming around with a cell phone, the other guy might not care. He's roaming. He's paying his roaming fees. He's he's wealthy. You call yeah. him up on the phone. He answers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're talking for 15 minutes. And you're thinking, I'm on my home phone. I'm okay. And he's like, <laughs> I got the money. I don't care. I'll pay this money. But he doesn't yeah. tell you that he's in Van Nuys right now. You know, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I'm calling you from Malibu. Wait, is Malibu a good example from Van Nuys or are they too close? Um, <laughs> no, that probably, yeah, I mean, that's that's a good distance. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I confuse the beaches and which one is too further away from the other because uh, I haven't been there. Um, but yeah, I mean, could you be, okay, so a better example, he's calling from Hollywood or something like that, right? He doesn't realize you're in Malibu or you don't realize he's in Malibu. Because yeah. he's in Malibu, you're actually not paying to his phone number. You're paying long distance to where he's actually talking to you from, where he answered the phone from. And yeah. I've, I've seen that happen because I've had people come into my Rogers store and say, well, I called my buddy and he didn't tell me he was in Calgary. Why am I paying long distance? He was he was the one roaming. I said, yeah, yeah he pays his roaming fees, but you have to pay for wherever he's using the phone. Right. And, and it, it's still Rogers, but it's long distance. Right, you call somebody right. else on Rogers from the other city, and it, yeah, man, they just freak out. Yeah, freak and not when I, you know, when I'm in Europe with, <laughs> you know, Blake last month, you know, I'm calling yeah. my wife back here. It's like doesn't cost me anything, you know. It's well, like, you call and I'm, I, I'm, tw I'm tw yeah, I'm twelve thousand or twelve hundred miles away. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, but you're talking about using like a video calling app or something, or, or on the internet. No, I'm talking about actual no. phone numbers. Yeah, I just pick up my phone, and call my wife. How the hell do you do that? Because my plan includes, you oh know, yeah, you know, two hundred you know country, you know. You know what? I just realized I don't have a plan that that would include me going to Europe, right? But I could pay for roaming in Europe. Um, it, that that would it, that would give me, you know, that all of my home minutes would travel with me, and I would be able to use the data if I paid extra for that. But that one, I think Rogers only pays per day, right? So, uh. If I went to, like in the States, I think it's, oh, they, they they raised it. I think it's like $15 a day. And to me, a lot of people say, well, that sounds expensive. I said, you know what? I, I wouldn't care though. If I was spending $2,500 on a vacation for a week, I would be happy to spend an extra $15 to make sure that I got all of my data. Yeah. You know, as well, a few extra hundred dollars and you get all your data. Uh, the before only other I left, I, I changed my plan um, to a different plan on Verizon because for an extra $5 a month, I could include 210 countries of unlimited calls and texts and 10 gigs of high speed data per day, as opposed to spending $10 per day for less than that. So I was there nine days 
and I communicate with my wife all the time. So instead of paying $90 for my trip, I'm now spending $5 a month. Yeah. And that's going to take me a many months to get $90. You know what I'm saying? So it was like a no brainer. <laughs> so it's, uh, and yeah, it was most of the time I had great coverage. Actually, uh, there was a lot of places I even had 5g ultra wideband. And I was really surprised by that. <laughs> well, so. it, ultra wideband, it would be a good thing to have. We don't, we don't have anything like that in, in, in Canada. I mean, we can still get ridiculously fast speeds in some areas. But the difference is we don't need to have, you know, the super speed um, yeah. because more places have like, I think I average around 250 megabits per second almost anywhere I go. Um, well, except for that one time a few days ago, I think I sent you the screenshot. <laughs> I had like a, a 1.5 megabits per second. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah, wait, were you up in the North Pole or something? <laughs> I was like 18 blocks from where I live now. I just this one tiny block where there's like next to no service. Yeah. And I can't figure out why. Because you well, can you know, the cell tower from there. You could I'll be honest with you. I would <laughs> rather have a solid, always on 4G LTE signal that was rock solid than to get this spotty 5g and 5g ultra wideband because okay. it's so up and down and like if you move like i could have 5g ultra wideband sitting here and i could go to my other side of my bonus room and not have 5g ultra wideband right so, okay. i mean it's like stupid listen you guys are doing it wrong whatever um, one of the problems is is that you have to have a fully standalone 5g um that it works better than when it piggybacks you may have a 5G that's piggy, not not the ultra wideband. It has to be on its own, but the rest of the 5G may be piggybacking, which means that it's not stable enough. It's trying to, and you're also not getting the full bandwidth because it's piggybacking off the 4G towers or its uh, equipment. Uh, Rogers, all I me, mean, I basically all of them started out that way because it's too expensive to get the new equipment right out of the gate, right? And they built the technology so that you could build it upon 4G and then move on. Uh, so Rogers has now basically got their stuff all on standalone. Uh, and I can honestly tell you there is zero issues with stability with Rogers. The only reason why I had that one problem, as I said, was because there just wasn't a signal there at all. No 4G, no 3G, no 2G, no 1G, no 0G, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 tell, no, no cups with, with a string tied to them. Nothing. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it, I, I, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter why the issue is. I, I would just rather them, you know, have a solid. Well, of course, you know, but what signal, I, yeah. But, but my, what I'm trying to, well, what I was trying to say, and apparently doing it badly, was that <laughs> if it's a solid signal, uh, then you don't have that issue. It's not about 5G, and that's the, I, I see that. And honestly, I never see anybody but Americans complain about it. This is not a shot at Americans. It's not your fault. It's the fault of the companies that aren't doing it right. Oh, yeah, you know, 100%. Watch the example of some European countries and most Canadian com companies in Canada um, where the standalone 5G is perfectly normal. See, here's the thing. We decided, or we decided, they decided. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> they decided, I wish I would have a lot more money, right? They decided that uh, they were going to reallocate at every turn, every chance they off uh, opportunity they had. So the old 800 megahertz, for instance, um, that only worked on on uh, on the 2G and some of the 3G networks. The, the 2G network's gone. The 3G network is, is uh, now almost completely defunct. So almost all of the 800 megahertz spectrum and 700 has all gone to 5G. So my phone, for instance, might be using six channels of 800 megahertz or five channels, whatever it is. I, I don't know the numbers. Uh, so forgive me if you do know. I, I already said I wasn't that smart a guy. <laughs> but anyways, you get, the, uh, you get X amount of the 800 megahertz channels, uh, a couple of channels of the 2100 megahertz, 2500 megahertz, 
and you've got the faster speed with that. But when you amalgamate all the other ones together, you've got, again, a more stable and a bunch of smaller amounts of data together, making one big thing of data, plus the faster one. And bam, Bob's your uncle. You've got, uh, you know, five, six, seven hundred megabits per second uh, download speed right now, uh, you know, on the bus moving. Uh, yeah, ultra wide band has a way to go before it's. Uh, it's never going to be good because viable. you have to be standing almost in with the thing inside your stomach yeah. in order to get it. Yeah, it's, it's signal. I, I've seen videos where a person put a a wafer thin pane of glass between its phone during the speed test, and it went from two point five gigabits per second to thirty gigabits per second, or gigabits. I mean megabits per second. Move the glass and it went back to 2.5 gigabits per second. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, oh, it's, I believe it. And, and other times where he just put his hand like that, just for a spec, just, just like this, yeah. but this fast. And it dropped completely. Yeah. So well, you realize that the, 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 the biggest detriment to any wireless signal is water. And our bodies are made up of mostly water. So it's, uh, it's you know. People don't realize that those little things matter um, because it does. We had a, a wireless network at yeah. a school that kept dropping out at certain times of the day. You can never figure out what was going on until... Rain? Uh, huh? Rain? No. When class got out and all the students were in the hallway, it killed the wireless signal. Oh, we had wow. to relocate the access points. And when we relocated the access points, yeah. the problem went away. What kind of crappy equipment were you using? Oh, this is years and years and years ago, too, though, before it was even. It was Linksys, you know. wasn't it? I'm just kidding. Don't <laughs> no. sue me. I'm just kidding. Don't sue me. That's No, but it, it's a, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, you know, people don't realize um, that those little things yeah. make a difference. Well, of course. Anyways. I mean, yeah. And, and obviously, it depends on on, on on the frequency that you're actually broadcasting. Uh, sure. So. Sure. I mean, the higher the frequency, the less likely you're going to pass through anything or, you know, less things you pass through. Uh, I mean, if your Wi-Fi signal was, was you know, six, you know, megahertz, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to go through everything. <laughs> but you're also only going to get about one kilobit per second. Speed. Yeah, you'd be worse than dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's about it that's about it yeah it's uh technology is a crazy thing man it's it's a crazy thing yeah <laughs> so basically i don't know i'm just i wanted to have a lot of fun talking about this stuff so there's going to be a lot of people out there with new iphones uh the current versions of samsung's of course and maybe a few people with pixels taking a lot of halloween pictures it's going to be kind of cool i'm looking forward to seeing some you're gonna get out. You're gonna be out there with the kids at any point, or, or oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, we we're all all adults. Everybody's got costumes, so it's gonna be a thing. Oh okay, all right. So there's gonna be some <laughs> Halloween pictures then, right? More than likely, yes. Right. More than likely, it has to be a yes. I'm gonna do some too. We should actually show them. Not all of them, obviously. <laughs> Pick two or three really good ones, and you know, and we should yeah. show them to our to our audience uh, next week. Say, yeah, this is what we got. We had yeah. some good fun, good good Halloween fun. Um, it's supposed to rain here tomorrow, though, so hopefully, though, it'll we'll have a break or it won't be yeah. too bad. Maybe sprinkles or something. I don't know. Hopefully, it won't well, be you too know bad. what we we had last year was freezing, and I mean it was one of the coldest. Is it just terrible? This year, uh, today it was very summer like. Tomorrow it's going to be almost the same. Uh, there yeah. is a slim chance of some rain right around the time the youngest kids get taken out. But once the teenagers and even young adults start hitting the streets a little bit later, it's not only supposed to clear up again, but it's still supposed to be in around uh, 65 to 70 degrees ish at like eight, nine, even 10 o'clock at night. And yeah. you keep in mind, again, I'm in Canada. And no, I'm not like in Alberta or Manitoba where it definitely is going to be below freezing by that point, or at least close to it. But uh, it's supposed to be only a few degrees above the freezing level at that time of, of the of the day, you know, mm. maybe several degrees. We're still looking at temperatures that are the same lows you would get in July. 
and the highs would be the same as yeah. in August. So, yeah, I left my work today. It was eighty-one degrees. It's a very unseasonably right. warm here as well. And it's, so it was a uh, twenty-six or seven Celsius, something like that. I'm guessing twenty-eight. Yeah, you got a little hotter than I thought. I think it was twenty-two or twenty-three here. So it was it was somewhere around what is that about seven? No, actually about seventy eight here. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, you gotta, crazy. You gotta be curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my old friend Gemini. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, it's not it's not expected to get cool until much later. So I don't know when the temperature is really gonna drop here, but it's gonna be a while. Oh no, I was way off. Sorry, seventy three point four here is what it was. Yeah. So that means you were about 26-ish, 27. Yeah, I was right about that, I guess. Um, and that's 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 hot weather. I guess that's even hot for you for this time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. What is it normally around this time, roughly? Well, it should be in the 60s. Uh, so it's about... During the day. A little, only a little bit warmer than what we, sh we should be at. But that that that's actually... Uh, we were way above that, even um today yeah so yeah definitely <laughs> and unseasonably we're be warm tomorrow. so this is this is going to officially be the warmest halloween i've ever seen the warmest one i've ever seen prior to in winnipeg was about 12 or 13 degrees during the day and it was still 10 degrees at night in the evening when kids were trick-or-treating i was already an adult so i didn't get to enjoy that <laughs> you know as a kid wearing like a parka and snow pants yeah, and have yeah. a costume over top of it so you know you're like a 10 year old kid you got to get an adult costume to fit over your snow gear um we've That's had years. Like usually what happens is it would either snow uh the very next day or snow on halloween it was just it's just crazy it was almost like clockwork every year and it did that so i remember yeah. when i lived in california when i was younger um oh, you didn't get no snow well, no, it, it you know Halloween was it, it it was always warm, and so me and my buddy would just jump on our bikes and we'd literally just ride around the, all the different neighborhoods with a pillowcase for our our candy bucket, you know, and just fill a pillowcase up. That's it. <laughs> That's the thing I forgot about. We yeah. all used to do that. Kids won't do that now. It's too embarrassing. We did that. Yeah. Pillowcases. <laughs> Now they all have to have the you know the special bucket, yeah. you know, be a pumpkin or and don't get me wrong, it's great. I love it. I love the kids having fun, enjoy your life, everything. But yeah, we that's it. And and you know what? For several years as a child, it was uh, what am I going to go out as Halloween? Hang on a second, where's the scissors? Let's just <laughs> cut this out right here. Cut this out right here. You're a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, yeah, yeah, I used to be like Santa, years. you know, my candy bag slung over my shoulder, riding my bike down the road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we we did that. I, I actually, oh man, second pillowcase when 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 you had two pillowcases full. People don't realize how much candy you can put in a pillowcase. Whew. That's the Tons. thing. You can come Tons. up with that little bag all you want, but I the, the the stuff I used to bring back, man. And I don't know what's wrong with kids today. But Tootsie Rolls were the king of the... You couldn't get better than Tootsie Rolls. Oh, yeah. I love Tootsie Rolls. Still but do. Nowadays, kids are like, I don't want the Tootsie Roll. You, you know, here, give this to <laughs> so-and-so. Like, What's wrong with you, man? It's a Tootsie Roll, right? Yeah. Or Tootsie Pops. That was like the golden egg, man. <laughs> the yeah. Tootsie or or uh, what about candy bonbons? <laughs> oh, stop it. He's talking about candy corns. It's because... All the friends you have to put uh, on the back of Canada. Uh, and it was like a no name, not no name, but you know, like a low level brand thing at a dollar store. That's what it said. It candy bonbons. Candy corn. It said candy corn in very tiny letters at the bottom. <laughs> and at the top of it, it said candy bonbons. But they were clearly candy corns. Clearly. They weren't called candy bonbons. Uh, I should buy another bag of that. I, I, I love my candy corn. It's probably oh, sold yeah, out now because I was too stupid to buy it yesterday. Yeah, some of my favorite candy. I have to go to ballpark. <laughs> make myself sick eating all that. Do you have a bulk burn there, or is that a Canadian thing? Yeah, I don't know what that is. 
I can I can I can kind of guess what it is by the name, but yeah, um, okay, that's good. Bolt you know, Bart. I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't have. Uh, you you don't walk in and there are bins after bins after bins of whatever you would normally find in a package that you can use a scoop to put in your own bag, and pay a lot less money for. And I mean, mm. people would buy um, uh, the cheese, the cheese um, powder to make mac and cheese, right? Uh, oh, and you can get like two different kinds, even right. You get like for like nine, ten dollars, you can get enough for like, uh, you know, like fifty boxes worth, right? Interesting. <laughs> and then you just buy the macaroni there too, and you get like huge bags of macaroni. You got you got enough mac and cheese for a year, and it's cost you less than twenty dollars as opposed to a couple of dollars a box, right? So yeah, <laughs> make as little as much or as much as you want. Um, but the candy also, I mean, there's like most, like many different types of chocolate bars, some, and, and most of them all like brand names. So you can go in there and you can get your M&Ms, uh, in bulk. Uh, I mean, grocery stores did that for a long time. Like a lot of big grocery stores were doing that. It's not as popular anymore. Yeah. Anymore. I remember mm -hmm. like they, they don't do it so much anymore. And I'm not sure why they stopped. I think it's just because they were way overcharging for the bulk. You know, <laughs> in their bins, but bulk burn still charges very little for that kind of stuff. So there's there's people that will actually go. Up, but the thing is, just anybody who does that for Halloween, you're making a mistake, because most smart parents will take it away from the kid and throw it in the garbage. Yeah, you, you can't they want it sealed packages and boxes. And it has yeah. to be. If you're that was like that when I was a kid though too. Yeah, so even I mean, if you're yeah. listen, even if you're a little low on on on, on funds. And this is a good opportunity for you to be able to have something for your kids. Don't let them have anything that is not sealed in a package. Period. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, so you can go ahead and say, "I'll taste it myself," but can you really taste what's not supposed to be? Right? You don't know. Where not it. not most of the time, really. I mean, no, you can't. No, that's 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 literally. I mean, like you don't know what's in anything. The whole point is be safe. They're your kids, right? Sealed packages alone. All right, I, 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 you know, I said I didn't want to do a public service announcement this episode. I wanted to just be jovial, and I went ahead and did a public service announcement. So that better be a short. Anyways, <laughs> PSA, PSA, <laughs> only package candy, please. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I hope everybody has a lot of fun on their Halloween. Enjoy yeah. it. Uh, and and you know what? I'm going to say this right now. I know it's going to sound a little bit weird, but if your kids are all grown up and they're gone and they're gone with their kids and your, your mom and dad are still with us, you know, or with you, uh, and they're close to you, uh, get in the car, go see them. It's Halloween. Uh, it may not sound like the Christmas, but if they're with, you know, if they're visiting distance, go see them. If they're not pick up the phone. Uh, it, it may not be like a Christmas or the birthday or whatever, but say hi, right? Grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads all want to know their kids and grandkids still love them. Well, you should visit them regardless of it's a holiday. Well, yeah, of course you should. I, I'm just saying, <laughs> just a reminder. Another public service announcement I said I wasn't going to do. I'm just. That's not really. I think a I, think I might get off here just, and call my dad. That's just uh, that's just good life <laughs> practice. So, and, and you know what? Uh, you, you can go ahead and uh, my dad will tell you whether I called him after this or not because he'll watch this and he'll say, "Oh yeah, he did." <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, yeah, we, do, well, we do a lot of we do a lot of cats in the cradle stuff there, so it may, it may not happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah. So everybody, um, it's spooky time. Have some fun, enjoy it. Don't get too crazy. Don't eat too much. Enjoy your new some... Apple intelligence, and in... <laughs> if you happen to be one of those Apple people. Yeah, do you know what? Um, speaking of which, so do you know how far back the update goes? Like, what what model mm -hmm. iPhone are they oh, not okay. updating? The Apple intelligence itself is only for iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max and up. Ah. Uh, everything 16. Um, anything before that still gets 18.1 and all of the benefits of 18.1 but without the Apple intelligence. Gotcha, gotcha. So they're right. very, very strict about what hardware is necessary for it. Yeah, I figured. I just didn't, uh, wasn't sure where they put the cutoff at, so. 
That's good. Well, I guarantee good, you, good whatever, information. Yeah, whatever, whatever it is that that Google's going to end up doing next year in regards to on device stuff will be limited, probably to the top end stuff, exclusively to next year and and beyond. Uh, yeah. Simply because it it just there's no way. Because if they could do it with this phone, you would be putting it in right now. Um, so there's things they're going to introduce that you, there's no way this phone will be able to do. They'll, they'll have right. trickle down. I guarantee you, they'll trickle down light versions of it. Though. Like they'll say, oh, well, you'll be able to do this, but it won't do it like that. Or yeah, we'll give you this, but you'll have to do it in the cloud. Right? That kind of thing. Um, yeah. So a lot of that stuff, too, Samsung will be able to take advantage of. Because Samsung yep. is generally using Gemini for its own AI and it's it's writing its own instructions on top of, of Gemini. A lot of people don't realize that. Like they don't even actually say that publicly, but that's pretty much what they're doing. Uh, and, yeah. and they also have their own stuff that's not technically the AI, their algorithms, but Samsung's been doing a good job of that stuff for quite a while. Yeah, there's, there's only yeah, you know, there's only a handful of, you know, not even a handful. There's literally what three or four companies that are doing, you know, AI that's the yeah. you know that's on phones and computers and things like that so you know you have yeah. other ai technologies but they're not so mainstream yeah, yeah no that no that's absolutely true but but the thing is is that um apple's thinking that they're going to convince everybody that uh they've got a, they're going to have a stranglehold on this and they're, they're innovating everything um they're introducing yeah. mostly stuff that samsung and google have already been doing for at least a year in some cases more um as has been the past many years yes, <laughs> yes. <their> <laughs> yeah, that's very true uh but also everything that they've got coming up that they haven't introduced yet is all either again already on samsung and or google uh and there's more coming right and that's before we get into next year's phones even so yeah. Apple has a long way to go to catch up. And the biggest thing, and that everyone has to remember this, be happy with what you got if that's what makes you comfortable. But remember this very carefully. Apple makes zero AI. It's all chat GPT stuff in the background. 100%. When you actually ask it to do this, that, and everything else, yes, the context it now knows, and it can understand this. But when it goes to retrieve it, it's still retrieving it, even if it's on device, from chat GPT or some other model that has to talk to chat GPT. Right. Even when you talk, let's say, I'll ask it chat GPT questions, that's what it's actually doing. There's certain things where it doesn't give you an auto, uh, and like, and this is what I, this is the demonstrations I've seen from people who already have it, where when they ask it certain questions, it shows them that answer. And that's nice, and it's pretty quick. But this thing is talking back to me, and you know what I'm talking about because you're using Gemini on your phone too. It's talking right. back to us, right. and it's telling us in addition to giving us this information. So, yeah. they got a little bit of work ahead of them still. They're 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 actually quite a bit behind, but it's not it's not the worst thing in the world because eventually they will get a little bit of Gemini in there and Chat GPT. But I have a feeling it's not going to be both. You're going to have to pick and choose which one you're going to use. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know how much AI, Gemini think. they're going to do, though. I think it's they're pretty much going to stick with ChatGPT. I mean, I, I, I suppose you could probably put the Gemini app. Maybe I don't. I don't even know if it's installable on an iOS. The, I, to be honest with you, not right now. It's not. They're actually in talks with Google about actually using it. That's the whole point. Um, I didn't hear that. They were gonna. They were gonna make chat gpt almost completely integrated into it and talks fell through on how that was gonna i can't remember there was a discrepancy and they didn't like you know what they wanted in that model so instead they're just using it so it's like oh you can ask siri to ask chat gpt <laughs> really what you're doing so you're getting a chat gpt answer through siri yeah and i think that's kind of ridiculous personally that's my yeah. opinion because if I want AI on my phone, I want the AI to be talking to me, not to this, you know, that's like, go, that's like going to the store and saying, I'd like to talk to your expert about the best lawnmower I could possibly get. And I want it to be electric. I mean, how's that conversation go? Hey, hey, Siri, ask 
chat GPT X, Y, Z. And then chat GPT responds, Hey Siri, tell Lionel. <laughs> no, it didn't, obviously, that's, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's a good example. Because in my example, I, I was going to say, it's like I go to the store and I ask for this lawnmower. And I said, I like uh, to talk to the expert about this lawnmower. And this is what I want. This is what I need. And the guy goes to the back and comes back and says, well, what you should get. I say, yeah. so you're the expert then. Well, no, the expert was telling me what to tell you. Right. I want to talk to the expert. Okay, just a second. Okay, he says that he definitely is able to talk to you. What's your question? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if that's how you had to deal with somebody? In a store? <laughs> this is yeah. how it would be. When I talk to ChatGPT on my phone, I'm talking to it. If I'm talking to Jim and I on my phone, I'm talking to it. It's responding directly to me. Right. And so when I ask it to turn my lights on, it doesn't say, okay, I'll help you with that. And then it says, chat GPT is going to help you with it. Well, I mean, it doesn't do that with lights. Obviously, Siri does that it, itself, right? Um, because Siri's capable of that already. So that was a piss poor example. But, you know, yeah, asking well, it anything yeah. outside of your device is different. I used, and I'll be able to say, when are you ever going to use Gemini? I used Gemini probably 30 times today already. <laughs> and I'm not joking. And some of it was just goofing around. But at least 15 times I used it because I needed either information or for something to be done. And it was able to do that. I summarized a couple of emails, summarized a couple of web pages. And, and it, it makes it, it does make it easier. It does make it better. Does, and mm -hmm. sometimes it helps me understand something better. AI can help you understand. See, we didn't talk about that. Wow, we don't have much time. We should see a quick summary of what we didn't talk about. Uh, because I was, it was brought up to me by my father, my dad, by the way, uh, he's talking about how much he loves the summarize feature in, in, uh, in the, uh, um, Apple intelligence. And, and I, I get what he's saying. He's wondering now in school, specifically universities, especially, and it could be high school stuff too, tests and essays and stuff when they get written. I mean, you can just get AI to do it. How are they going to control that? and know that the students are actually paying attention. Because if I if I use AI, I'm paying attention to what it's doing so I can learn from it. But if I'm a 15 year old, just trying to make sure that my mom sees that my grade's gone up, <laughs> I'm gonna tell ChatGPT yeah. or Gemini or whatever else to do my homework for me. And then I'm gonna sign my name at the bottom of it right. and give it to the teacher. <laughs> right. How do you, yeah, you know, uh, how are they gonna, police this it, i mean it, it's it's not that bad yet but there's no way you can tell me somebody hasn't already done it and it will get oh, yeah. there so uh now a lot of people say yeah but it's going to get too perfect but here's here's some food for thought what if you're already smart enough that you don't need it you're just lazy and that's entirely possible you can be smart and lazy so you know that you can tell the ai to do the essay but do it more human-like so that it has at least three errors and it doesn't look sloppy. It looks neat, but slightly misplaced sentences in at least one spot. Yeah. I mean, you can be that detailed in your AI. And then the teacher right. looks at it and goes, oh, you've made a mistake here. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then the next one you do, you tell it, don't make any mistakes, but make sure this sentence uh, is is not structured properly, but no grammar gr grammatical. <laughs> you see, just like that, no grammatical errors. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I hope my dad doesn't watch that part. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lionel. That word is not in the dictionary. That doesn't exist. You just made a new word up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help with that. I'm just an AI goal. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you? I don't know. What's your take on that? Because we're obviously running out of time. So, on. What's your? No, what's your I, take? I, 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 no, I, I think you're spot on. I, I think yeah. it's, um, it's going to be a really difficult process moving forward. I think to police any of yeah. that, and that's going to go all the way from you know, grade school up into university because, mm -hmm. you know, kids these days are getting phones way earlier than I, you know, I was ever Yeah, and they got phones, computers and, and, and the tablets and everything else yeah. too. So. 
Yeah, so it's it's going to be hard to um, completely shield, you know, the kids away from um, yeah. that type of technology. And let's be honest, you know, kids these days are learning things much better, much faster, and much sooner than you know uh, it, I yeah, could have ever imagined. True. Really, you know. So there's also there's also a, a whole uh, new class of of <laughs> pun intended. Uh, of kids who who uh, um, it's not that they're not smart, they just don't care. Like, I why do I need to learn about you know uh, that? Uh, why? Yeah, but back care? back in our day, we why were paying the high, high school Mesopotamia was, you know, or, or what or something like that, right? And, and and they don't know that at some point, some of the stuff that they're learning is actually going to be necessary. I actually hear like fifteen year olds have said recently like, where am i ever really going to need math unless i'm uh, uh, an accountant i'm like yeah what, what do you want to do you know uh, well i could be an engineer oh, without math no oh uh, construction worker without measuring no what <laughs> a yeah. cabinet maker no a mechanic no <laughs> what are you going to do without math almost yeah. nothing right can you do janitorial without math i'm sorry no you have to measure liquids well not if you buy a bucket that's got it written on the side no of it. no no you still have to measure <laughs> it's pre-mixed pre-mixed yeah, no. there's, pre-mixed. Only, there's only certain things that are pre-mixed <laughs> only certain things that are pre-mixed and even when there is you have to add water to them i i used to do janitorial stuff trust me you can't do it without knowing math it, it's just like how people yeah. cook most it's people don't cook now. by measuring their ingredients they just dump it in there and go yeah that looks about right <laughs> well no that's true that's true but you tried right. doing that with this deadly chemicals i did <laughs> there's there's I'm just no saying uh I'm just saying. Math, math is necessary there's so, so many different things that you learn in school are necessary but the biggest thing is is that when you have a conversation with some younger people who by all rights, should be way more intelligent than me. I was going to say way more smarter, which would mean they are, <laughs> but way more intelligent than me. Uh, and in some areas probably are, but yet you ask them general knowledge questions and they're like, I don't care. I don't know. Why would I know that? And I'm like, like, is there anything you like? I don't get it. Like yeah. there, there's a lack of interest. And I'll be like, well, it's because of tablets and it's because there's, you know, a thousand channels. Kids don't watch a thousand channels; they watch TikTok. No, but it, it, again, it goes back to <laughs> the whole how you use something, and it, it's 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 a tool. And if you use it correctly and as a learning tool, just like a textbook, then it can be beneficial. But if you're trying to make it do your work for you, so you don't have to do it, that's you know that's obviously an improper no. I use. completely one hundred percent agree with that. In fact. Um, when I used to go to the library to study for uh, subjects in school, including doing a test or, or study for an essay, which is what you had to do back in the day, you'd be given your subject for an essay or told to pick a subject, yeah. and you would go to the library. First thing you did was you figured out what you wanted to do about, and then you'd go to the library and you'd head straight for, come on, say it. Uh, come comic on, books. the card catalog. The comic books? The card catalog. Oh, <laughs> Wasn't That's sure where right. you're going there. There's people yeah. out there who have no idea what the hell I just said. They don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yes, it was a whole shelving system or a thing in the middle or sometimes a whole wall. And you would have to get, go to A to, to, to C, D to M or whatever, right? And you'd pull yeah. this thing out and you would go through it until you found either the name of the book or the author. But you'd have to look in the section whether you were looking for an author, a book, or a subject. And then you'd go to the card catalog and you look and yeah. it would tell you what row it's in, what yeah. shelf it's yeah. on, and, and so on and so on. And the only thing that would be different would be it doesn't necessarily mean that it's book four. It could be book four, one, or ten in that row, but it would be on that shelf. And that's or, how you look for a book. Or you'd have to go through some microfilm. Some microfilm. Oh, my God. That was even better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Get it right. It's microfiche. Whatever. <laughs> the microfiche, and it wasn't that micro, really. It was about the size. It was slightly smaller than eight millimeter film. Um, yeah. But yeah, you'd put it in there, and it's like you're looking through a little microscope, and you're looking for the. 
uh, you know, that news yeah. article or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much fun. But see, the uh. thing is, there, there were. Don't get me wrong. There were kids back then that would just go there and they would jot down the notes of whatever was important, and they would get the necessary stuff they needed to pass. When I did it, I actually wanted to learn about what I was trying to write about. Uh, I had a thirst for knowledge, so I know there are still going to be kids that are going to do that. So some of them will use the AI and actually learn from what the AI is telling it. If they're doing that, then actually having the AI write it for them is not that bad. Because they can then take that and use their own writing. Or you could even say to AI, okay, I want to say exactly what you said, but I need this sentence to be this. Change it. Now, you're technically making it your own, and you're learning from it. So I can Please, understand that. And some teachers will actually start to allow that kind of thing, as long as the student can prove that they learn from it. So here's my suggestion for any teachers that might see this and wonder, what am I going to do about the AI situation? Um, if you have that kind of thing come up, then you have the student actually let them hand it in and then give them an oral test and see if they understand it. Not for the whole essay, but see if they understand what they supposedly wrote or had AI do. If they show an understanding of it, then they should get a higher grade or whatever grade you think is highest for the work that was done based on the fact that they understand what they asked it to do and what it did. Yeah, or you could just go to Reader's Digest version, you know, Cliff Notes. And <laughs> it was, well, that's kind of it. You summarize it. I mean, yeah. honestly, because you, you can do that. You can go in and, and, and say, oh, well, I need to learn this information about Abraham Lincoln. I mean, that's a that's an easy essay thing in grade school for a lot of Americans, right? Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. So, you, 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 you know, and back in the days, again, you do the card catalog, blah, 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 blah. Or you go to the school library, most likely, and it would be there still card catalog though <laughs> uh but nowadays you can just uh you know uh, uh, up until very recently you would google abraham lincoln you go through wikipedia then you would check all the sources from at the bottom of wikipedia and check all the individual sources and then you would make up your mind do i okay i'll take this sentence and this sentence and then i'll just rewrite a couple of words if you were smart you would rewrite some of those words <laughs> and and not just you know regurgitate it right um but now you can actually put one of those, uh, or actually even more, you can put uh, two or three of them into, uh, what do you call it again? Um, the Google one. Uh, Gemini? So you talking no, about? No, notebook? What are you talking about? What notebook one LM. Button? Notebook oh. LM. Yeah, you can put, it, put those into Notebook LM, and you can tell it that you want it to summarize the whole thing. And then once you see the summary, you read it over, and you go, okay, I can write this out, write this out skip that, add this, and you can change all the notes and then tell it to analyze the rewritten summary of it and make it into an essay and it will write the entire essay. And you can specifically say it has to sound, or sorry, read like a human being wrote it. And you again can tell it to leave at least one or two errors randomly in it. If yeah, that's it, crazy. Or no errors, but move it around. But again, if you're demonstrating that you're learning from it, then I don't have an issue with it because it's helping you learn. That's just the key. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But they, you know, they're going to have to police it somehow. Uh, yeah. And I, I do think what, what I said is probably the best method is that teachers should just basically uh, do an oral, uh, a quick oral ex exam with the student to make sure they understand what, what they handed in. If they can show an understanding of it and that they've learned from it, then it should count. Yeah, because you're not going to get rid of it. You're not going to get rid of the AI. There's nothing they can do no. about it. Because you can get no. the AI and then write it out by hand yourself, right? So, <laughs> right. so yeah, that's my opinion. And I'm yep, I it. agree. I think it's. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's again. It's all about learning. And if you whatever tool I think you can use to actually learn, I don't see why you can't use it or shouldn't be able to use it. I yeah, that. absolutely. As long as you say, like you say, is uh, actually um, creating knowledge yeah. and not just eliminating your workload, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, so, well, with that said, we probably should call it uh, call it a week. <laughs> it's the end of our workload for right now. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say, um, please join us next week. Kind of, kind of a, a big thing. If you're into photography, I am going to talk about something that I originally thought about talking about today, but I knew we weren't going to have time, so I didn't bring it up. I have discovered, and I'm, I'm sure there's people that know this, but I've never seen it written anywhere, uh, that you can get more information from your sensor than you think on at least a Pixel 9 Pro XL, but I'm starting to think that it's almost any, at least flagship phone or at least good phone. I'll explain all of that next week. You really got to watch or listen because it's quite fascinating. If you're watching, I will show you examples of why that's true. I hope Tony Northrup is actually able to see this because I know he would love to know this. He probably already does know. So don't forget. And I know you're like, not subscribe, you're hit the bell because otherwise you won't get notified. See? That's right. Exactly. So. so happy Halloween, everybody from Toronto, Canada, Lionel. Happy Halloween from Robert in Nashville. We'll see you That's, next week. Oh, I don't want to say that one. <laughs> I can't Peace get out. my goodbyes right. Yeah. <laughs>